Welcome to our special series of Lenten services, coming to you online from Augustana Lutheran Church, Boone, Iowa. Today's service is led by Pastor Dan Solomon. Welcome to our online worship resource for Augustana Lutheran Church for the fourth Sunday in Lent, March 14, 2021. Certainly want to welcome you here today. We invite you, as has been our practice during these times, to light a candle if you have one, as a reminder that as we gather, even if we are separate, we gather around the same Christ who is the light of the world. We continue our worship series around the theme, Holy Vessels. We have a lot of great things in store for you as we approach Holy Week. Also note that beginning this last week, we have made a, available a recording of Holden Evening Prayer. You'll find that posted on our Facebook page every Wednesday, as well as available on our website. Today, we extend Christian sympathy to Jody and Randy King of our congregation on the death of Jody's father, Clayton Swanson of Dayton last week. And in our prayers, we lift up Don Paulson. We continue our Lenten season of recovery as we focus on health as essential to our spiritual lives. Long times of difficulty can impede our ability to stay creative. The picture of our lives is dulled, and hope for a brighter future can fade. We need a touch of inspiration to awaken us from our sleep, as we hear in one of this week's healing stories. We also awaken to our agency to seek out the divine healer reaching out to touch the power we know can restore our intellect and imagination. We emerge ready to re-engage with the world, seeking and seeing solutions, creating different pictures of life, renewed just as a mosaic artist creates beauty from broken pieces of glass. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, renew our holy vessels so that we might be able to create and imagine new possibilities, new solutions. Let us pray. 
God of all possibilities, made in your image, you have tasked us as co-creators of a better world. You bestowed imagination and the ability to learn and progress. But we are tired. Our energy wanes and enthusiasm wanes. The call for ideas, solutions, workarounds, and adaptations has been nonstop for us all. Whether we are needing to find ways to keep children engaged and well, or figuring out how to maintain passion for our work in the midst of trying times, or needing desperately to undo systems of oppression too long affecting our lives and the lives of our neighbors. Not only our livelihoods, but our liveliness is at stake. Too often we want to give up, declare it all too hard and simply isolate, waiting out the time for better days. It all feels overwhelming, and so we look away, sometimes even from the need in our community. Help us, healer. Show us our energy reserves. Forgive our cynicism. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. I invite you to imagine a warmth begin to arise within the core of your body. It may help to keep your eyes closed. This warm orb of light is deep within you, a flame always there and ready when you need it. This warm glow begins to emerge from the recesses of your inner being to ignite and spark inspiration. It floods your whole body until your skin is glowing with it, radiating outward. This light from you offers a beacon for those around you whose own light reflects and multiplies your own. There is now exponentially more radiance. Know this. We are gifted with agency to effect healing in the world no matter what. We are not alone, and we can join with others to magnify hope. Christ will answer when we call, when we reach out for what we know can help, for you, for me, for all. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you. and breathe out with the relief of assurance. Amen.
Welcome, boys and girls. It's good to be with you today. I sure wish we could be together in person, and I look forward to that day. I have a question for you. Do you like to play? Oh, yeah, I, I know you do. You know, play is fun, but play is more than that. Play is about joy and happiness. Play is about being in the moment. It also helps us to be creative and to use our imaginations. Play is really important. Now, the last year for us hasn't been the most fun, and I bet you haven't been able to play like you have in the past, but you still can have fun. But sometimes, yeah, it's just hard to be creative and to use our imaginations. So let's play today. Does that sound okay? All right, so I went on a stuff safari at home and I had Mrs. Solomon's permission. So I grabbed kind of a suitcase, a briefcase here, and I just sort of grabbed a bunch of different things. They're kind of random things uh, from our house. And did, did, did you see that? Yeah, there's some fun stuff in here. And some of this was just like on its way to the recycling. You might recognize something like that. And, oh, I grabbed a few things from the workshop. And All right. So play is sometimes not just playing with what is, but imagining what could be. So let's use our imaginations. I've got a lot of things here. What could we do? You know, you could do this at home with mom or dad or grandma and grandpa's permission. Maybe you could grab a bucket or a bin, but I grabbed this, this case. And it makes me think about something I haven't been able to do the last year, and that is travel. And I especially like to fly, so let's pretend, let's imagine that we're going to go flying with all of these materials here. So um, first, I have to have my magic hat on, okay? Yeah, it looks a little silly. And, and then you know how when pilots, pilots always have scarves. So that's a scarf. And um, um, maybe I should announce the flight. The flight will be leaving soon. Okay, so we did that. And um, let's pretend this is our airplane. Okay, this is our airplane. And um, what do we need to do before we fly? Oh, we need to put, we need to put fuel in the airplane. Huh? This is kind of, so we're going to put the fuel in the airplane. Make sure it's all in there. All right. And we put the lid back on there and off. It doesn't really look like an airplane, but in our imagination, we get on and we can fly. That was kind of fun, wasn't it? It just took some normal, everyday kinds of things. And with our imagination, we could imagine what could be some possibilities? We could be creative. Maybe you could do this at home. And I look forward to being able to do this kind of play with you in person. God has created us to be creative and has given us the gift of imagination. One of the good things is we can always go to God in prayer. So let's close with the prayer that we've used each week. And remember, there are these hand motions, and it's hard to do with this magic hat on. But, you know, I'm a pilot, so we can make this happen. Are you ready? Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you with hearts, hands, minds, and souls in need of your healing touch. Heal us from the inside out so that we may reach out to help heal your world. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning, and remember, God has made us creative and given us the gift of imagination. Thanks so much. Today's reading is from Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. 
Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous acts of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter am I, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by the completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your presence and abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, and the one who had little did not have too little. Our Holy Gospel today comes to us from Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before Jesus, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at Jesus. But when the crowd had been put outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand. And the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, we find ourselves in the midst of the month of March. And there's some things that I really like about March. We know, and we saw that around here, that spring is coming closer and closer. And I love spring. But also, Ever since I was a kid, I loved March Madness. The men's and the women's NCAA basketball tournaments. And, you know, it's a really exciting time. But here in the state of Iowa, you know, it's, it's not quite what we're used to. It seems like for many years, all three major basketball teams, uh, the state universities and even Drake, are going to the tournament. So everybody's team is a part of March Madness. Now this year the, the Hawks are in it, and I think Drake's going to make the tournament, but you and I isn't quite as good as we've expected. And oh boy, the Iowa State Cyclone, the men's basketball team, it has been a really, really long year. Now some of you all know, and I know there are many Cyclone fans here, that I married into a fan full of, or a family full of Cyclone fans, so I, I can feel you on this one. But this has been a difficult year. And it's been kind of a grind for Coach Prome, and I'm sure for the men. And I certainly hear that it's been a tough one on all you Cyclone fans. It's been a season of prolonged difficulty. Now, part of it is, is the expectation of Cyclone basketball fans has been pretty high ever since that surprise in 1980 
when y'all got Johnny Orr to come from Michigan out here to be a coach, the bar has been set pretty high. It's been a while since there's been a season like this. And I noticed when the Big 12 tournament was, was uh, starting, Coach Prome was talking about how they needed to reset. They needed to have a new mind. And yet as fans, Cyclone fans, you're probably relieved the year is over. You know, sometimes it's really tough when you're in the midst of that grind. You know, I think of those people who are faithful Chicago Cub fans that for year after year after year have had endured lots of losses. I'm a Detroit Lions fan, and it's getting to be kind of a long drought for them as well. Pat Kelly, who was an outfielder for the Baltimore Orioles back in the 1970s, had led a troubled life early on, but he had turned his life around and became a devout Christian. This was in the late 70s. He was having a real big batting slump. And, uh, you know, he, was, he just couldn't hit the ball. And one day he was talking to his manager, Earl Weaver, and he said to Coach Weaver, Aren't you glad I walk with the Lord, Earl? At which point Weaver said, I'd rather you walked with the bases loaded. People can get pretty desperate when they're in the midst of a losing streak. There are times in life that are a grind, that are difficult. And in the midst of that grind, in the midst of that prolonged difficulty, it's really tough to be creative. It's really tough to engage our imaginations and imagine something being different. Imagine a different picture for today and a different picture for tomorrow. Well, this coming week marks the one year anniversary really of the pandemic, pandemic's impact on us here in the United States. And it's been a grind, hasn't it? It's been a time of prolonged difficulty. And it's hard. It's hard to be creative. It's hard to be imaginative when you're in that time of life when it's a grind. And so we have our gospel today. This is the fourth week of Lent, you know, and each of these weeks we've been in the gospel of Matthew looking at a healing story of Jesus. And I hope as we've worshiped together virtually, you've begun to feel at home in the gospel of Matthew, to feel at home in these healing stories in the eighth and the ninth chapters of the gospel of Matthew. So we have another healing story today. Now, there are a couple things that are unique in Matthew's telling of these healing stories in this story. First of all, in Matthew, this is the only story of the resurrection from the dead of a person. You know, you might be thinking, what about Lazarus? Well, Matthew doesn't tell the story of Lazarus. And the other thing that is really unique, and maybe you even heard it when I read the gospel, it's two healings told in one story. It's the healing of one healing story that has another healing story woven within it. One healing story is a powerful man, a man who is a leader in the synagogue, whose daughter has died, who comes to Jesus. And he asks him to come and heal his daughter to, in a sense, resurrect her. And as Jesus and his followers follow this man, there comes a woman who's had a hemorrhage for years and years, and she's used up all of her resources trying to be well, and now she's even worse. Now, it's an interesting thing about this story, that, that this woman would have been seen as unclean, as would the situation of the daughter, because it was seen to be unclean to touch someone who was dead. So we have these two interleafed uh, healing stories that seem so very different. But Jesus takes the time and heals this woman who simply touches the hem of his coat. 
We can imagine that the dad is waiting with bated breath saying, we're going, to, we're going to my daughter, and there's this other healing that happens. But then Jesus does go with the man, and he's laughed at, but he, he raises the little girl from the dead. Now, what is in common with this, this dad and daughter and this woman who has the hemorrhage? Well, they both seem to be desperate. They both seem to be losing hope. And they both turn to Jesus for help in their own ways. There are some similarities to the other healing stories that we have seen. The first I want to really lift up today is to notice how Jesus responds to those in need. And as we have seen week after week after week that Jesus responds to all those, all those who are in need, even when it's not convenient, even when there are boundaries of his day and age that said he shouldn't do this. In a case like this, they're both unclean. Jesus willingly crosses boundaries to bring healing. Reynolds Price, who is a writer and a professor of English at Duke University, wrote a book on the Gospels, and he said this, The striking thing to me about Jesus is that he shared compassion, showed compassion to all he met. He was available for all who needed him. He turned no one away. And we see that in this healing within a healing story today. Jesus responds to those who are in need. But then think about this story. We see how the Father, how this woman, respond to Jesus. They respond to Jesus and they hold on to him. They focus on him, even though they seem to be losing hope, even though there seem to be limits on their possibilities. They respond to Jesus and they hold firmly to him. Mary Verghese was a brilliant young Indian surgeon when she suffered a severe auto accident. And this accident rendered, rendered her crippled. The only parts of her body she could feel were her arms and her head. The only parts of her body she could move were her head and her arms. Now, as a devout Christian, Mary believed that somehow God could still use her, that God still could do important work through her, and she felt herself drawn to the lepers in her country there, the outcasts. And she felt led by God to help heal the lepers. And she could imagine doing surgery on the hands and the feet of the lepers, the outcasts who couldn't get medical care to deeply impact their lives. So Mary endured several major surgeries herself so she could sit up straight in a wheelchair. And if you go now to see her, you will see a busy, uh, incredible surgical center where she, in her wheelchair, operates on the hands and the feet of lepers there in India, deeply impacting their lives making their lives better than they could have imagined. And Mary says she is doing work that she never even would have considered until she encountered limitations because of the terrible accident she found herself in. The pandemic that we are still in the midst of has brought all kinds of limits into our lives, hasn't it? And we can focus on what we don't have and what we can't do. It's hard to be creative. It's hard to engage our God-given imaginations when we're in the midst of a grind. But just as we talked in the children's sermon, rather than focusing on what we don't have and the things we're missing out on, is to imagine something different. 
not limiting ourselves to the way things are, but what could be. And could it be that we will emerge from our, you know, our exhaustion and our weariness from this grind with a God-given new vitality? And sometimes, you know, it's precisely because we're limited either by our exhaustion or lack of resources. It's precisely because of our limits that we can be creative. Because in a way, we sometimes have to. Well, what does that mean for the life of our congregation? Well, I think one of the questions I think that is important, and I've tried to focus on this this past year, is how are we learning? in the midst of these difficult times, when we can't do things the way we've always done them before? How might God be involved? How might be God leading us to a new thing, to new life that's beyond our imagining? In the midst of this, what do we hold on to? Well, I think in our healing story today, it's pretty clear. We hold on to Jesus. And if the only reason we hold on to something here is, well, we've always done it this way, we might want to reconsider. To hold on to Jesus, the Lord of healing who calls us into new life. So think about our double healing story today. The father, the leader of the synagogue, comes to Jesus in grief experiencing the death of a child. He's desperate. Imagine the woman whose story is embedded in the first story. She comes in shame, in rejection, in hopelessness. And Jesus responds to their needs and they hold on to Jesus. And what happens? The father who is mourning is restored as a joyful parent. The woman who is an outcast is restored to her health and to life in her community. Jesus transforms them and their lives. For remember that Jesus responds to those who are in need. And the invitation is to hold on to Jesus so that through his healing touch, we might be transformed, inspired to be creative and imaginative and to be rooted in new life. Amen. Let us pray. Healer of our every ill, 
especially our malady of exhausted spirits. We come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. You remind us that we do not have to shoulder everything alone. We give you thanks that all we must do is orient ourselves towards your divine spirit to accompany us, touch us, inspire us, and heal us. We pray especially for all who feel opportunity and possibility is cut off to them, whose spirit is continually dampened and damaged by those who fail to see value in their contributions, who steal away rights to the fullness of expression. We give thanks for communities, congregations, nonprofits, and businesses that are supporting the flourishing of all voices, especially voices that have been silenced. We give thanks for the courage of innovators who use their resources and creativity to make more good in the world, making this a priority over profit. We ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can join this effort now and into the future. And today we pray especially for Don and the King family. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The words of Jesus we highlight this week from the healing star story are, the girl is not dead, but sleeping. We have touched today on our need to be rejuvenated in spirit, to awaken with new vigor for creativity and curiosity. This intellectual healing is a spiritual healing. We may feel like we have been slowly dying away these past few months. But Jesus affirms that we are not dying. We perhaps are sleeping. It is the healing we yearn for, for, to be awakened, brought back to life with vitality 
and vigor for the days ahead. And so this week, I invite you to play with creating a different picture from the brokenness. I invite you to take your broken pieces of sea glass and move them around on a flat surface as a mosaic artist would and try various configurations and make a work of art even when the raw materials of our lives that we have to work with feel broken, we can get a new perspective that can awaken a new vision for life within us. After you move these pieces around and you, you get them in an arrangement like a mosaic that you like, I invite you to take a photo of it with your phone. And if you use a wallpaper or a background on your phone, you consider using this photo in this way. A reminder that we are capable of reworking, remaking the pictures of what life can be. If this technology is not a part of your world, keep your mosaic creation on the table where you can see it frequently, using it as a focal point for prayer.
Now go with confidence that we will awaken. We will seek out and reach for the healing solutions that our neighbors, our communities, our world needs. Recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. You are not dead, you are sleeping. And may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver, salve to your soul, and to spring to your step. Amen. <laughs>